This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Anoa'i kako. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland. My guest today, Jeffrey Kim, is joining us from the continent via Skype. Jeffrey's part of my recent series providing media exposure to some of the very active members of the Sierra Club of Hawaii. And he will be a guest host on Hawaii is my mainland in the near future. He's one of six people from Hawaii to have participated in the recent political candidate training by the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. The PCCC, as it's known, engages in electoral and issue advocacy, work on democracy, as well as economic populist priorities. Jeffrey is also the Energy Committee co-chair of the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Hello, Jeffrey. Thanks for calling in. So tell Hello. us about training, the training meeting Senator Elizabeth Warren, all that good stuff. Well, I, I, did, I guess I technically met her, cause, but met her from like, you know, uh, like 300 steps away. But, you know, yeah, it was, it was still very exciting just to be able to see her be able to speak and uh, um, see Keith Ellison speak and meet so many, yeah, you know, I guess, I guess like-minded people, if you will, uh, in the same room at the same time for, for several days. Um, and, yeah, that's part of the reason I brought up the uh, the training as a uh, uh, a talking point with this uh, uh, show that's titled, you know, Organizing 101, and it's specifically about transformational versus transactional relationships, is because, um, yeah, I, I, especially being at this training, you know, this is kind of one of my first times um, seeing so in depth and nuts and bolts of what it is to run a campaign. Um, and yeah, it, it made me think a lot about just organizing and movement building overall. Um, and, and yeah, and thoughts that came up in terms of how I feel about the current process of, uh, of campaigning for, for elections. Jeffrey, so set the stage a little bit for us. There was, um, you were at this conference and they, um, they brought you guys in from all over the place. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's folks from, you know, a lot of folks from New Jersey for some reason, specifically. Um, but, you know, uh, I believe all the states were represented. I don't think I heard of anybody from Alaska being there or not, but, yeah, pretty much every, everybody okay. from some state. Okay, and the common state. denominator yeah. was that all of you are going to do what? Uh, most likely, uh, but not officially everybody, run for office, yeah. Um, from everything from, you know, uh, something like a state legislator to, you know, all the way up to Congress. So, yeah. So there's, um, there were, you were one of six people from Hawaii. So tell us about Hawaii's team and, and what, what do you think um, was special about Hawaii, if anything, in, in our participation in this? Uh, okay, so yeah, in terms of the teammates who went with us, uh, it was um, it was myself, uh, uh, Representative Chris Lee, uh, Representative Nicole Lowen, Representative uh, Kaniela Ng, and uh, also um, uh, Kaniela Ng's wife um, uh, Kara, who uh, you know leads a nonprofit and and also some campaign uh, efforts herself, and uh, uh, also actually a good friend of mine, Ian Ross. Um, who, yeah, is as well most likely going to be running for office, yeah. So that looks like a very dynamic team. Looks like you guys probably could have had some fun. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's some pretty good times um, that we were able to have together, yeah. Uh, and and, and that, that was something actually kind of uh, interesting, I feel like, uh, you know, yeah, because we, we, we were one of the few groups that everybody knew everybody you know in from that state you know like even even smaller states you know in terms of the progressive community if you will like arkansas or something like there's only about like four or five people who came from there but none of them knew each other or i don't know i i, I 
I just didn't really see that with any of the other states, so that wow, that did that. make me feel a little. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was hard you know? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, yeah. so we're doing our hooey thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and 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 you know, I'd I'd often see I uh you know most yeah a lot a lot of times we'd be sitting together for for a lot of things too. So um, so that's cool. And yeah, I think also. I don't think there were too many other states that had uh, currently elected officials um, present. So that was really, uh, I think, especially kind of, I don't know, especially empowering for me to be able to have that much sort of personal time with, um, with some of our, our, our legislators and, 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 yeah, be able to talk really in-depth shop that, you know, I, I don't think I would always had the time to do or opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. We three of them. That's yeah. Okay, so so talk to us about that the part of the transactional versus transformational that that was really made an impact on you. Sure. Um, so real quick, just to kind of distinguish between the two words, um, this is kind of a, a way of thinking that I take from the Sierra Club organizing manual, um, and. Yeah, and, and the way I've internalized is basically, you know, a transactional relationship in the relation of uh, the subject of organizing, you know, is, yeah, it's like, like it's almost a customer and like, you know, business kind of dynamic. It's like, hey, I, I need something from you, you know, uh, okay, great, you've given me the thing I, I wanted, you know, thanks, see you later, have a nice day almost, you know. I mean, that's an extreme way to think of it, but you know, versus like a transformational relationship would be, um, so like, like, let's say like taking an, an example from like, um, you know, running a, a chapter of a nonprofit, you know, like, let's say you needed, um, you know, you needed, you needed some like work done on your Facebook page or something, you know, um, instead of necessarily just going in and being like, hey, you know, like we need X, Y, Z things done. Can you please do those for us? You know, really start more from like, hey, you know, what, what is it that you would really like to be able to gain out of being here, you know, and like, and how, you know, can we help develop skills that, you know, can help you get there. And um, like, for instance, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, so sometimes like what, there's a chapter of a nonprofit called Citizens Climate Lobby, you know, that I, I was, Excellent. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, I was, I was taking some leadership roles in for a while and uh, you know, sometimes people would actually just be like, hey, like, is there something, you know, what do you want us to do, you know, or whatever, and I'd be like, more interested in just wanting to know, you know, like, not so much like, yeah, do you, you know, what, what do you want, you know, what I can just tell you to do rather than, you know, how we can grow more as a team, you know, because it's not only, you know, for an, I feel like an ethical standpoint of being able to, um, you know, further empower people as much as possible because that's what I think is the um, the job of an organizer. You know, versus uh, necessarily a leader, which which is something I'd really like to talk about as you know two words juxtaposed um, against each other in a little bit too. But um, but yeah, I feel like as an organizer, your main job is actually to empower other people, not necessarily lead. You know, I mean, like certainly, you know, like I think you know you got to have a a team captain in many situations, but um, but you know, I, I, that, that's basically, you know, how the, the way I feel about those two words, actually leadership versus organi organizer, you know, leader, because literally by definition, it implies followers, you know, and, uh, yeah. And I, I just don't think number one, that's it's a vertical uh, relationship. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's, and it's, it, it doesn't really help develop that person, you know, just to follow orders and so forth. And. Um, and also, yeah, I, I think, you know, for me, you know, maybe this is a little bit cynical, but I, I feel like I, I, th I think a lot about, especially after uh, having been to this conference, you know, uh, which is not hopefully to be reflective of how I thought about the people there so much, but just thinking about the p candidacy process, you know, it made me think of a, a quote from a Batman movie, actually. This is the, the Dark Knight. It's a sequel to the first Christopher Nolan one, but um, in it, um, this character who actually is a, you know, a politician in it, he's actually kind of supposed to play sort of the archetype of like the, the white knight, you know, and the, the really infallible politician almost, you know, and 
uh, the guy who really is doing it for the people. But, you know, he, he even said in, in that movie, um, he said, hey, you know, in this city, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And yeah, it's kind of pretty, pretty like, whoa, poetic stuff there, huh? You know, <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and I'm not saying that like that's, you know, uh, you know, 100 percent true. But I think we've seen that happen throughout history many, many times, you know, people who started out really great and then, you know, power gets to their head or or people don't want them there, you know, and um, X, Y, Z. And just and for me, like beyond ethics, it's. Just as a, uh, you know, as a quote, you know, strategic uh, mindset, if you will, in terms of fighting for your cause, you know, and 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 really trying to to make change happen, you know, I, I think we need to we need to, you know, especially these days, I think we really need to know how to empower ourselves more than necessarily, um, yeah, you know, just follow somebody and. Uh, so anyway, I'll, 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 I'll stop right there for now. <laughs> well, I have a, a, a little question before we, we take a break. Um, I am always interested in sort of the weather report, and I don't mean what's happening in the clouds, but how did it feel in Washington, D.C. to you and to be being part of this uh, progressive uh, event? Did you was was there what did it feel like i don't want to lead you just vanilla okay sure um well yeah one one quick thing i actually really noticed um just feeling different for sure once i uh actually you know stepped off the plane and got in dc and just I, 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 I actually talked a lot about this with you know friends I made uh, on the trip who are from there and um, especially the person who was housing me at the time like you know like uh, I, I was shocked because you know having been in I, even though I am from the mainland originally like I haven't been back in a long time and uh, and yeah and just there's just, people just aren't smiling quite as much as, as you are as people are here I feel like and uh, um, and yeah and just and I, I don't know. I, I uh, but but you know at the same time like you know outside of that's I feel like all within like um, Capitol Hill area and like and on the metro and stuff like that. But but yeah, when I was out in like the the suburbs where I was staying and just in the grocery store and so forth, like people were really, you know, were very very nice. Actually, it was it was a really great community. But um, I don't know. I it's, you know, from my own observations and just talking to people. Yeah, who you know work and live there. Like, I think there is you know kind of a different level of pressure, in many ways. Even though you know we we certainly face a lot of pressure on our own for economic reasons and others. But yeah, so that's something I and I felt so grateful actually that like you know that's something I actually, re, li, you know, literally this thought ran through my head when I you know was here for the first few months, um, uh, and and just thinking like wow like you know it's just one of the most expensive places to live in the country, you know, in terms of cost of living and, um, you know, but the, the job opportunities don't, you know, always seem to meet the, 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 the demands in terms of the cost of living here, you know, quite like New York or San Francisco, you know, which are the one of three, you know, two of three of the cities sure. which were included in terms of highest cost of living. And, and just the fact that people here though, like, you know, are, you know, some of the friendliest I've ever, you know, met and like uh, I've lived all around the, around the country, and and I would almost assume that it'd be more of a rat race, you know, here than anywhere else, because it's like, right, you know, just the odds Harder. stacked up in that way. So um, that's yeah, just that's something you know specific to Hawaii that I really thought a lot about once, um, yeah, once getting back to the mainland and okay, and yeah, sorry, yeah. So Jeffrey, we're gonna take a little break and then talk some more. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you.
the, you know, the, the kind of things that were Welcome being taught at the captain training. Today we have uh, Jeffrey Kim, who is joining us from the North American continent somewhere. And recently he participated in a candidate training in Washington, D.C. Um, one of the things that Jeffrey um, and I have been talking about is this idea of transactional versus transformational um, relationships in organizations. So we're going to go a little deeper on, on that. And I, it's um, always helpful to have very concrete examples and um, so Jeff I was wondering if you can kind of hone in on um, why why changing the way um, political organizations at this grassroots level need to be focusing on the uh, transformational like what does that mean yeah for sure so just to um, put it into definitions the way I see it uh, you know, as I said earlier, like, you know, transactional, it's, you know, thinking kind of like that business mindset. It's like, I, I I want something from you and hopefully I'll be able to get it from you, you know. And then once I've gotten it, it's like, all right, cool. That's, thanks for doing business. And then, you know, transformational, yeah, it's more like, I don't know. I mean, just to be really casual, but being real people, you know, and people who care about each other and care about each other's growth and in a specific, like, Organizing context, I feel like, yeah, you know, um, really uh, spending the time and and the energy to try to um, empower others and and what you know does, help others that, empower themselves and you, other people and so that? forth. You you um, it, you mentioned in the context of uh, the Sierra Club that this was something that that you felt they were very good at. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's well. It, at the very least, it's it's in um, you know. Yeah, it's it's literally a, 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 the part of the official organizing manual. So um, yeah, and I think that that philosophy is is a part of the Sierra Club mindset uh, in practice as well. Okay, so um, uh, did you have a chance to <clears throat> indulge one of your other great interests, jazz, while you were out there? Sorry, I just had to ask. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went to, uh, there's, yeah, something that I, I think, yeah, we probably should start soon here is uh, a monthly jazz open mic, jazz specific. So, like, all the, you know, all the 1% of people who play jazz, in, you know, in the world come out for that one day, you know, together to, to drink and, and play for each other. And yeah, that was really, um, that was a surprise and also, very refreshing. So yeah, so I, I did get to play a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So back to politics. Sorry, I just had to. No, no, no worries. <laughs> so as far as the um, the decisions that were made, I don't know that there were particular decisions made, but for those of you who are in the training, can you talk about some of those personal transformations maybe that happened with the participants or how the growth was able to happen as a as a result of attending this conference and being with I mean people like Elizabeth Warren that's I, I I listened as you live streamed from Facebook her talk and I thought it was fantastic I mean I just just over Facebook but I imagine being in the same room um, there was something to it uh, yeah. Um, well, just in terms of some of the just experiences overall and the feelings, like yeah, that it was extremely. You know, I. Um, yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think this word gets used enough in talking about what I'm trying to talk about. But you know, I think it is the kind of the most appropriate word. That's you know, solidarity, basically. You know, uh, just feeling that that sense of just. Everybody being on the same page, not only in ideas, you know, of course, you know, progressive is still a pretty wide range of term, you know, and, but you still like just uh, what, not only what? the same values, but also the same, I don't know, excitement and drive, if you will. Like everybody there really, really wanted the things they believed in, you know, and yeah, I, I really feel that way. So if you could think of the maybe top three 
agenda items that you heard a lot in that room, what would they be? Oh, interesting. Top three. Um, you know, it, actually, the ones I remember, because there was just so many different conversations and sessions and so forth, um, was actually about um, the internet, you know, and internet privacy and, and, um, and just making sure that we keep the internet as democratic as possible overall. Um, you know, especially with, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just been, I, I, I don't, I haven't been following very well, but I, I, you know, I get plenty of alerts, you know, every week just uh, on, on bills that, you know, certainly for the progressive community are, are threatening to, you know, that desire to, to keep the internet as democratic as possible and so forth. Um, so that was one thing that, that I, I realized I don't think enough about and, you know, but I certainly think is, is needs the attention. And uh, um, another thing, you know, it was interesting, uh, the way the person put it, um, one of the panelists was, you know, it, it, so, yeah, I don't know, for, for me that it's, it's basically a fact that, you know, with the amount of time we have left with climate change, you know, um, and in, and being able to to address it, you know, properly, um, it's 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 a pretty you know all hands on deck scenario, you know, and like what is that timeline um, in your mind, Jeff? Sorry. If you had to put um, a timeline on that, what would it be? What it is oh. when in your mind? What what kind of a timeline are we dealing with in climate change? Oh, okay, sure. Um, well, there, you know, luckily, um, University of Oxford actually has a, a website that, you know, basically tries to answer that question um, specifically. It's called trillionton.org. Uh, ton spelled the British way, but at any rate, it, it's a carbon, it's a ultimately estimated, but, you know, it's a, nonetheless, it's a calculator for uh, the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting into the air, you know, like as we speak. Um, and yeah, and they you have a prediction, and it's uh, by 2037 we'll hit the two degree limit, um, which is you know basically to put it really casually like the the point of no return, if you will. You know, we're basically we do not want to pass the two degree limit. That's that's just the main kind of uh, thing to, to to know there. And um, wow, so we have and, decades. Yeah, so that's 20 years based on just a carbon calculator. But sorry, I just want to throw this last part yeah. in. But methane, you know. There is no calculator for that one out, that I've been able to find, and you know I want to play it safe and say that methane is at least half the problem. Um, and so then, yeah, if we're going to play it safe, ten years. Um, <clears throat> well, that 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 um, methane bit is is the sobering one. I don't know why we don't hear that talked about a little more widely. Um, I when I had Stuart Scott on my show, he said the same thing off camera. I'm like, Stuart, why didn't you say that on camera? <laughs> and he's like, it's so scary. Uh, it's like, oh no. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, the guys you know, it is, it. it is scary. And I mean, like, you know, without, without sounding negative, it's, you know, we, we should be scared. I think we should be more scared than we are for, as a population overall. But, um, you know, that's not to say that we, you know, we shouldn't act towards solutions because, yeah, we, we so, need to. But did you uh, hear the, some the, solutions? anyway, the reason I brought up climate change was in terms of answering your question about the yeah. conference, you know, like as w one topic. Yeah, that's something that resonated certainly well with the room when this one speaker really, you know, passionately was kind of like, how do I put it? Um, basically, that, you know, that, that in so many ways, a lot of sort of the you know, the, the messaging and, and, and the kind of, yeah, the messages that were being sent over the last couple of decades about climate change and what we can do about it, you know, have been mostly about individual action, you know, and certainly for myself, you know, that's, that's a mindset where I've been for a long time is like, yeah, like we, it, we clearly are beyond the point of, um, of individual action alone, at the very least, being okay. able to yeah. save the day, you know, and and at this point, you know, for me, it's, yeah, it, it really did, um, you know, strike 
I, I resonate, you know, something inside of if myself that I've I've very felt very passionately about is that just, you know, one issue I do see, you know, and I, I'm not trying to um, criticize anybody, but is that you know we, yeah, we it's it's it's, you know, I feel like to to really address the climate change crisis properly, we need to think as big picture and as long term as possible, you know, um, while also you know knowing the most immediate dangers as well, but. Uh, I think that too often people have the right intentions when they, you know, try to uh, help out to protect the environment. But, you know, to use kind of a, a, a nature themed metaphor, you know, um, I think sometimes people see trees too much instead of forest. And um, and yeah, and so that that so that is that is a, a topic that did come up sort of um, put a little bit a little, a little bit more. Uh, less diplomatically than I'd put it, but yeah. Jeffrey, I can't help asking you, it just crossed my mind, um, that you are in the middle of the continental North America right now in the U.S. You're not at home in Hawaii, but there's a lot of talk here about North Korea, um, which you probably oh. know about. What's it like where you are? Um, there's not actually been that much talk about North Korea, uh, uh, where I am right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a pretty rural area, right? <laughs> I've been in, in quite a rural area for a while where, you know, you don't really see houses for, you know, a couple, a uh, couple, whatever. So that's, it, it's hard for me to say. Yeah. Okay. Just had to ask. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. No, you, you can't um, go, you can't go too far down the street here without, without it somehow. Somehow coming up, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So, well, real quick, uh, if if you don't mind, I, I kind of I wanted to be able to dig what? in a little bit. Okay, we uh, have one more about... minute. It's yours. <laughs> oh, sounds good. Well, so since you know the topic of the show is about transactional versus transformational relationships, um, yeah, I just feel really strongly about um, some thoughts that you know, um, yeah, that 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 I formed while I was at this training and um, and I think I really can kind of boil it all down to this one breakout session which is all about uh, basically volunteer engagement you know and, and for that uh, breakout session I mean really that that running a campaign for political you know candidacy it's it pretty much spelled out to me as like similar to running a campaign for anything you know in terms of like a, a non-profit scenario, like, you know, running a campaign for a specific bill or, you know, um, X, Y, Z. And, and yeah, you know, and, and, and the thing that kept sort of, you know, almost raising a little bit of a flag in my head was, was just a mindset almost, or just, just even always referring back to the campaign, the campaign, the campaign, you know, it's like, what can this person do for this camp, my campaign? You know, how can they fit in? You know, and I don't, and I don't think anybody had malicious intentions. You know, and like I think that's the way we, we talk about it. You know, it's almost like an us and them kind of a okay. mentality. You know, even if you're talking about your own friends and family, which it, I just think is strange. You know, uh, at the end of the day, you know, and I, I understand that that's how we've done it for a while, but. Okay, well, I can't wait to see what you do with it when it's your time or when you're helping your buddies, when you're organizing for your buddies who are going to be um, running for office next year. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I don't want to say too much, but certainly for myself, if I, I I'm still not 100%, you know, um, committed to, to the running, but, you know, if I do, um, yeah, I, I, I want to run a campaign that will probably look relatively different than a lot of other campaigns you've seen, you know, and, um, okay. And yeah, anyway, so, so, so yeah. Thanks but a lot, Jeffrey, for, uh, for, for joining us here on Hawaii is my mainland and we'll see you when you're back in Honolulu. Aloha.